I thank you for all the different seasons. And all the good things you're doing in my life. Today I'm going to hear God's word. I'm going to receive it. Keep it in my heart and mind. I'm going to be set free because the truth will set me free. And Jesus, you are the truth. So right now, I receive your spirit of truth. In the name of the Lord, amen. So today I'd like to share with you about keeping a tender heart. And this is a really, really important thing. It's all through the Old Testament and the New Testament. And in life, how we respond determines how our heart will become. And so it's not the things that happen to us that determine who we are, it's the way we respond. So I'd like to give an example. If you took a ball of clay and an ice cube and you set it out on a day like today, a hot day, it's the same sun coming down on the clay and it's the same sun coming down on the ice cube. The interesting thing is the results are completely different. The clay hardens and becomes like a rock and the ice cube melts. And to keep a tender heart, we need to be able to melt before the Lord. In fact, it's good to cry. The Lord will release things that we don't even know are inside us and we'll find little teardrops starting to appear in the corners of our eyes. What is that? That's the Lord tenderizing our heart. But he doesn't want it to just be a once in a while thing. He wants us to have a tender heart all the time. And in order to do this, we can't be in Eastwood. In other words, what I'm saying is, is we can't decide that we're going to be these tough, mean people. I know it sounds good from Hollywood's viewpoint, but that's not the way the Lord is. And I know sometimes it's, it's, it's gratifying to give somebody a piece of your mind and tell them what you really think and let them have it. But that does not bear the fruit. Jesus said, you will know them by their fruits. But just so you know that God wants you to be tenderhearted, because even as a pastor, I've been criticized by many Christians who say, I'm too easy going, I'm too nice, I don't get down on people and kick their butts. If you look at the word of God, it doesn't tell us to be that way. And if you look at Jesus, he wasn't that way. Do you know when Isaiah prophesied about Jesus, it said that Jesus would never use his hands to do any violence? That means that through Jesus' life, he never hit a person? See, what are holy hands? The Bible says to lift up holy hands to the Lord. Holy hands are hands that release blessing. They don't hit people, hurt people. And so Jesus' hands only brought healing, only made people better. And you might say, well, I'm a nice guy. I, I don't hurt people, I'm not mean. That may be true, but also bitterness can make your heart hard. If you become bitter, if you feel that you've been gypped, if you feel that your life isn't fair, or you just don't like the heat, you know the saying, if you can't stand the heat? See, so you're either going to melt before the Lord, or you're going to become hard. Something's going to happen when the heat of life comes upon us, and it comes on every single one of us. You can't escape it. 
but you do get to choose how to respond. But I want to give you actual scriptures to show you that the Lord wants you to be tender-hearted all the time. And if you see these scriptures, it will really help you because when you see it in God's word, and you're like, okay, God is actually telling me to be tender-hearted. And don't confuse being tender-hearted with being a doormat that people walk all over you. That's not what God is saying. He's saying keep the state of your heart tender toward God. And notice tender toward God and others. So here's the scripture. I want to give you time to look it up so that you can actually even highlight it because you know, the Bible talks about when we have defining moments that change us forever. This scripture can be a defining moment for your whole life. But I will tell you, if you do this, you will be criticized by the naysayers. And usually the people who criticize those with tender hearts are those who have hard hearts. Because if you have a tender heart, and you get around a person with a hard heart, you're going to bug them. It's going to irritate them because the Holy Spirit will convict them of their own harshness just by the fact that you are kind and gentle. So are you ready for the scripture? Ephesians, um, excuse me. I, okay, Ephesians 4. 32. We'll look at a couple of these. This stops me from being the wrong kind of person. You know what my wife said to me? She said, I really like it when you're nice. <laughs> now that sounds ridiculous. We're all, why are we all laughing? My wife said to me, I really like it, Jeremy, when you're nice. Well, why did she say that? Because she said, I don't like it if I'm around you and I feel like I'm walking on eggshells or that you're going to criticize me. She said, I like it when you're nice. And then, of course, I could rationalize and say, well, what about when you're messing up and you're not doing the right thing? Guess what? You should still be nice. See, niceness isn't conditional. I'll be nice to you as long as you do the right thing, but if you mess up, watch out. See, that is not the way the Lord is. I mean, I think the most extreme example is the Pharisees wanting to stone a woman who was committing adultery. Jesus was very nice to her, and he actually defended her, even though she was doing the wrong thing. Now, he did say, go and sin no more, but he was kind to her. He was kind to her. But look at the scripture. It says, it's, really, it's so simple. But we have to have a conviction to get this down in our spirit. It says, be kind to each other. Tender hearted. Forgiving each other. Just as God in Christ has forgiven you. There it is. Do you know in the Old Testament, it even talks about how people treat their pets. And it says that a righteous person is kind to their pets. So when the boss comes home from work and he's had a bad day, he doesn't kick the dog. He doesn't take it out even on the dog. Kindness. All through the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New, it talks about the loving kindness of God. And yes, we're supposed to fear the Lord, show Him respect. This is all true. But you can do that and be tenderhearted at the same time. See, Tender heartedness and kindness is the character of God. But how many people think God is, is somebody else? Somebody who's, you better watch out because God's going to get you. 
this kind of attitude is wrong. If you think God's going to get you, how many people are going to come to God? They're going to be running the other way. But what did Jesus say? Come to me. Come to me. Do you know what the, the end of the story in the Bible is? At Revelation, at the very end? At the very end of the Bible? Come to me. You go to the very end, Revelation 22, and it says, come to me. He was thirsty. Come to me. Come to me. God doesn't want you to be afraid of him. He wants your respect, and he doesn't want you to be scared of him. So then we look, and we need to have some more scriptures. It says in Proverbs 13, 15, good understanding. What is good understanding? Understanding the nature and character of God is good understanding. Parents have an opportunity to show the kindness of God to their children, for example. Bosses have the opportunity to show the kindness to their employees. Whatever your position is, there's somebody you have an opportunity to be kind to. But here it says, good understanding gives you favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. Notice it says the word hard. It's like that piece of clay baking in the sun becomes hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. And then it says that a hard heart makes for a hard life. Have you ever noticed, it's very interesting, the soft heart and the hard heart, the people who, who, who live a rough life, who it seems like it's just all kinds of difficulties, what do they say? Do they say they had a troubled life? They usually say they had a really hard life, hard, hardness. Hardness of heart brings a hard life. Your exit door out of all the problems, whatever problems come to you, your exit door out of the problems is to ask God to give you a tender heart. And I'll show you more scriptures for this. David messed up in the Bible and he sinned and he committed adultery. And he said, create in me, Lord, a clean heart. And that's a good start. But we need more than just a clean heart. You can also ask the Lord to give you a tender heart. So that you don't want to let people have it anymore. Why do you think Jesus said it's so simple to treat others the way you like to be treated? It's so simple, but yet we miss it sometimes because we get frustrated. We get angry. We don't like the way things are going. And this is the test. When that's happening, that's the test of your heart. How will you respond? If you realize in your heart, in your mind, that God wants you to be tender, you can turn it around. But sometimes people, they just blow up and all this anger comes out and they don't know why. And they say, where did that come from? That's not the way I really am. Well, that was your heart, the hardness of your heart erupting. So, let's look at some more scriptures. God warns us not to let our heart get hard. In Hebrews 3, 18 through 15, it says, Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. He says, I was grieved with that generation. These are the Israelites who just kept complaining and wouldn't stop complaining and kept complaining. It says, God was grieved with them. And it says, it describes their heart. It says, they do always err in their heart and have not known my ways. And what was the error of their heart? They let their heart become hard and they forgot the goodness of God. I don't think people realize how serious 
It was with the Israelites. So let me explain. God led them out of slavery, parted the Red Sea. They had an 11-day journey to get to the Promised Land. And all they had to do is for 11 days keep a good attitude. What if your trial is only for 11 days? And if you could just hang in there and keep a good attitude for 11 days, you'll make it through your trial. They only had 11 days journey. They ended up in there 40 years. That's a long time. And they never did make it into their promised land. But here's what happened. When things got tough, when it got really hot in the desert, just like today's a hot day, and our air conditioning's out, and it's hot, they started to get agitated, and they started to complain and you may think, well, they're just complaining. Why would God be so upset with them? Because here's how bad it got. They said, let's go back to Egypt and let's kill Moses. They wanted to kill Moses. They were turning on the person who God had put in charge of them to lead them to the promised land. Now, when, when it gets to the point where you want to kill the person who God sent to bless you, that's a hard heart. That's a hard heart. And so this is why God was upset. He says, harden not your hearts. So knowing God's ways is the key. Because it says they erred in their heart. They let their heart get hard. So some more scriptures from the Bible that talk about this. One of the main things that keeps your heart from getting hard is humility. See, when somebody else is messing up and they're not doing everything just right, if you're humble, you won't give that person a hard time because they're messing up. In fact, the Bible says when someone else messes up, restore them in a spirit of meekness lest you also fall. This is what happened in the 80s. There were preachers falling like dominoes because all these different preachers were exposing the sins of the other preachers. And one preacher would fall and then another and another and another and another. And it was like dominoes going down. They were all falling. Why? Because they hardened their hearts and turned on each other. It says that love covers the multitude of sins. What's that mean? A whole bunch of sins. A lot of sins. Love covers it. Love doesn't go around and tell everybody, can you believe what this person did? I can't believe they did that. They're not as holy as me. See, they think they're holier than a piece of Swiss cheese. They think they're holy, holy moly. Get down on everybody else because... Nobody else is as great as they are. But see, this is the downfall when we do that. And so, when we are hard on other people, and when we get a hard heart, and we don't show mercy, we don't know God. Because God is merciful. God is gracious. God is kind, full of loving kindness. And here's the scripture in Ephesians 4.30. The scripture right after follows just two scriptures after it tells us to be tender hearted. It says a couple of scriptures before it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So what is he taught? What, what is it that God gets grieved about? Is it that we were laid somewhere? Is it that we got angry and we said a cuss word? Was it that we didn't read our Bible today? What, what, what was it that God was upset about? The hard heart. The hard heart. And when people's heart gets hard, they turn to religion instead of God. And they start to think, 
that what it's all about is I'm going to be this really good person and I'm going to do everything right and then I'm good. There's a name for that. It's called self-righteousness. See, the only righteousness we should take on is the righteousness of God. And that righteousness is full of mercy, full of loving kindness. Watch how happy it is for you the next time you're in a position where you let someone off the hook, you give them a break, you show them kindness. I was in a grocery store and a person didn't see me and they slammed into me and they knocked me oh, you know, to the side. And they go, I'm so sorry. And I said, it's okay. Now, I was thankful I responded that way because, you know, you don't know what's in your heart until something happens like that, right? But one time I was in the other position and I bumped into somebody by accident. They turned around and they go, get the blankety blank blank out of my way, you blankety blank blank. <laughs> Whoa. So here's the other one. Galatians 2.28. This is Paul talking. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. What is he talking about there? Not having a hard heart. Now this is the guy who got thrown into prison and he could have got real bitter, but instead he says, I'm going to write, I'm going to sit and write stuff. And all those years he was in prison, that's what 80% of the New Testament is is a Christian named Paul who got thrown into prison. And so, see, God made good on that one, didn't he? Because if he wasn't in prison all that time, he probably wouldn't have taken all that time to write all this stuff down for us. But Paul understood this principle from God about having a tender heart, and he referred to himself as the chief of all sinners. So there you go. And what kind of person did God pick to, to do amazing things? The chief of all sinners. And so this is, this is so simple, and yet it's simple to know it, but it's something else to do it. So God, do you, do you see what it's saying here is that it's possible to grieve the Holy Spirit and it's possible to frustrate the Holy Spirit. And that actually has to do more with how we treat other people than whether we're obeying all the rules. Now think about that for a minute because most people think they're good if they obey all the rules. But God is looking at how we treat one another. Husbands, how do you treat your wife? Wife, how do you treat your husband? Uh, how do you treat your friends, parents? How do you treat your children, children? How do you treat your parents? I mean, it's all this basic stuff. But the people in your life, this is what we're talking about. How you treat the people in your life. Some people say, well, I'm really nice to strangers. It's just the people that I have to hang around that irritate me. But see, it's the people in your life. God is looking and how you treat the people in your life. And when you are being good to the people in your life, you're being good to Jesus. Because Jesus lives in the hearts of those people in your life. And so you're actually being good to Jesus. So, we come to this place of realizing that we don't want to frustrate God and we don't want to grieve him. Do you know what that's really what the fear of the Lord means? Because a lot of people think the fear of the Lord is like you're trembling. I'm scared of God. I'm scared. No, that's not the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is when you come to a place where you, you say, and you're really sincere, you say, you know what? I don't want to do anything that would upset God or frustrate him. When you come to that place, your heart is softening. See, your heart is softening. Because you are wanting to make sure that God is pleased. That he's happy with the way you're being. And this can be done. So here's 
the, the key. And if you guys could bring the communion in, that would be great. Um, but here is the key. There has to be a way to do this. It's one thing to say, okay, I want, I want my heart to be tender because bi the Bible says to be tender-hearted. God told me I should be tender-hearted. I want to do this. Now get out of my way, you jerk. See? See, you can know the right thing, but how do you get it in your heart? That's where we're going to bring this to today, and especially when we take the communion, you can ask God to give you a tender heart. Have you ever felt like really yelling at somebody and then something stopped you and you changed your mind and you didn't yell at them and then you're really glad you didn't? Have you ever had that happen? Everybody's looking at me like, I don't know. Well, it's, it's called passing the test. It's called passing the test. Because you, you don't always know why things are messing up. There's a reason for everything. <laughs> It's like, our, why did our air conditioning go out? Was it the devil? Do you think everything's the devil? Well, if you think cottonwood's the devil, then there's your answer because there's cottonwood plants and that got into the vents of the air conditioner and it overdrove the air conditioner and the compressor went out and it broke down. So we may be getting a new one, but the point is it wasn't the devil, it was cottonwood. It, something got in there that didn't belong in there. And then the air conditioner couldn't function the way it was designed to. In the same way, when something gets into our heart, bitterness, anger, resentment, when something gets in there that doesn't belong in there, then our heart can't function the way it's supposed to. So we've got to clean out the cottonwood or get rid of whatever's causing things not to function. And a lot of times it's not the devil. It's just there's stuff there that doesn't belong there. The devil gets blamed for almost everything. And so how do we get our heart tender? So I'm going to give you three simple examples worth writing down even. The first one is God has given every one of us a conscience. Always, always, always obey your conscience. And notice they said your conscience. Not somebody else's conscience. Your own conscience. Because somebody else might say, well, I feel it's fine to do this but you don't feel it's fine to do it. Don't let somebody else's decision cause you to disobey your own conscience. So this is the first thing. Always, always, always obey your conscience. Your conscience comes from God. When Walt Disney, who here has seen the movie Pinocchio? Who wants to see the movie Pinocchio again? When I tell you that Walt Disney put, put all this Christian stuff in that movie, and it went right over everybody's head, it's full of Christian messages. Even the story of Jonah's in there with the whale. But the whole thing is full of Christian messages. When you don't obey your conscience, you become a jackass. And then you start to grow ears and a tail. Watch it. But it's not a coincidence. Who is Pinocchio's conscience? Jiminy Cricket. What are Jimmy Cricket's initials? J.C. Who is Jiminy Cricket? The Holy Spirit. Walt Disney was a genius. He put all that stuff in there. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm not going to just watch the movie. See, it went over everybody's heads, didn't it? Are you listening to JC? Are you listening to Jimmy Cricket? You ought not to do that, Pinocchio. You should, that's a bad idea. See? So, always obey your conscience. That's the first one. The second one is be led of the Holy Spirit. 
Too many of us are making decisions based on other people. Well, I don't really feel like I should go to that party because I know it's going to be a lot of bad stuff happening at that party, but I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Can you afford to miss your, miss your destiny by being somewhere you're not supposed to be? So, always obey your conscience, be led of the Spirit, and then the third one is know and do God's Word. And that's why we're even taking this time here. It's to know God's Word and then do it. And what was the message today? So simple, and yet, do we do it? It says, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. That, that's, when you do that, you're going to see things in your life turn around. You're going to see all kinds of things turn around. You're going to have better relationships with people. You're going to have unexpected blessings come into your life because you made a decision to obey God. How's everybody doing here? Can you stay in the heat? Are you doing okay? I grew up without air conditioning until I got older, so I didn't know any difference. See, it's all perspective, right? But as I look at this, there are so many examples in the Bible that we could look at. And I'm not going to share anymore right now. And the reason I'm not is because I, I, I have faith that you got the message. I have faith that you, you got the message today. But let that message become a part of you so that the people in your life can honestly say that you are a nice person, that you are a kind person, that you are a merciful person, And so when something goes wrong, look at it as an opportunity to show mercy. The reason I say that is because if you're never inconvenienced and everything's just going your way, there's no opportunity to show your good character. But God wants your good character to show out and so that will happen when somebody messes up. And now you are in the position to choose whether you're going to be tenderhearted or not. Do you believe that if you ask God for something, he'll give it to you? Yes. It says in James chapter 1 that if you ask in faith, believing, not wavering, in whatever you ask according to the will of God, he'll give it to you. I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. There are many, many talented, gifted people out there who have amazing talents and abilities. They're great at doing certain things. But your character is way more important than your talent. And people with good character will go further than people with a lot of talent. And so your character, the character of Jesus. Has everybody got the... I don't have one. Oh, I do. I bet you would have liked it better if we would have handed out a bottle of wine and a big loaf of bread, right? Maybe we'll do that sometime. I don't know. After we get the air conditioning fixed, right? Um, okay, so as we come before the Lord this morning with sincere hearts, 
if you say a prayer with me, and I'll tell you what the prayer is ahead of time, because some people say, well, I don't want to pray and say what you say. Do you tell me what you're saying? Because I don't know if I want to say it. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say. We we'll ask the Lord not only to create in us clean hearts and a righteous spirit, but also we'll ask him to give us tender hearts. And who is our heart being tender to most of all, most important of our all? It's a tender heart toward God. What does that mean? I don't want to frustrate God. I don't want to do anything to upset God. I want to please Him. And so what happens when that happens is we no longer can go around and say, you know what, I want to do what I want to do. How many of us said that before? I've said it before. I want to do what I want to do. But then you see Jesus saying, not my will, but your will be done, Lord. And that's not an easy one to say if you really mean it. Because that means you're going to have to let go of some things sometimes. So, Lord, thank you for your presence, for your word today. And as we come before you this morning to take the communion, <clears throat> we're going to say a prayer together and invite you to do a work in our hearts. So, would you say a prayer with me? And it goes like this. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I invite you into my heart to do a fresh work today. I turn away from sin. I choose to obey my conscience. I choose to be led of the Holy Spirit. I choose to seek and know your word and understand all of your ways. Create in me a clean heart. Give me a righteous spirit. And give me a tender heart. Let anything that's not of God leave me now. Come out of my heart and mind. And replace it, Lord, with your presence, your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we can do this. I'd like um, Kathy to come up, but also the, the band members too, um, get ready while she's coming up. She has some announcements for you today.